This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. All right, this lecture is on the first chapter of the lecture notes, Objectives of Organisations, um, which is the first of several chapters in these notes um, that don't involve uh, any real calculations uh, and a very much revision of um, previous exams. Um, and in a sense, most of it, uh, these first few chapters, is just background information. Uh, now, because there are no calculations involved, I'm not going to lecture at great length. I'm not, I'm not going to read every word of these notes to you. It would be silly. You must read them yourself. Uh, but just let me make sure it's clear what it is we're getting at uh, and, and the main areas uh, to focus. There won't be whole questions in any of these. Uh, but certainly, they could form um, small written parts uh, of longer questions, which the other parts do involve calculations. Uh, however, let's get back to where we are, objectives to organisations. Um, the reason um, this matters is that when we do come to the calculations, and you're doing things like calculating a net present value of a project, and deciding whether it's worth investing or not, it's important, obviously, to know what it is we're trying to achieve, what the ultimate objective is. Uh, and really, we, overall, we, the job of uh, us in the exam and the uh, job of the directors of a company is to keep the various stakeholders happy. And you've got there a list of the standard uh, stakeholders, the people who are interested in the business. Obviously, the shareholders, uh, they're of major concern. Now, the community at large, concerned with um, the effect on the environment, things like that. Uh, the employees, obviously, depend on the company uh, for the living. Uh, the managers, the directors themselves. Uh, customers, suppliers, uh, lenders. Obviously, lenders, banks and whatever. Uh, they're concerned with how well the company is doing. And the government if for no other reason than uh, because they'll be collecting tax. So all of those stakeholders are interested in the company and overall we want to, if you like, keep them all happy. Uh, however, as far as uh, things in the uh, UK are concerned and in the exam for that matter, of primary importance are the shareholders. It's the shareholders who own the company. It's the shareholders who are concerned uh, about maximising their wealth. Uh, you'll see later we measure the wealth of the shareholders by the share price. Higher share price, shareholders are more wealthy. And so our ultimate objective, certainly in the calculations we come to later, is to maximise the share price. And you'll see two terms there. You don't really need to learn the words, but be, be able just to mention the idea uh, maximising is what I was just talking about in relation to the shareholders. We want to maximise their wealth, we want to maximise the share price. At the same time, we can't ignore all the other uh, stakeholders. We can't simply ignore employees. If they're not happy, they could end up leaving or going on strike. As far as the other st uh, stakeholders are concerned, we want to make sure they are satisfied uh, 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 and the word is satisficing. Now, I say you don't need to learn the words themselves, but for really all the calculations we do in the exam, our ultimate object is to maximise share price, to keep the shareholders happy. But for the purposes of any written parts of questions, uh, again, bear in mind, we need to satisfy uh, the other stakeholders. Uh, as I've written at the bottom of that first page, although uh, certainly in the UK and in the US and in the exam, it's maximising shareholders wealth that ultimately is the main objective. Uh, it's not the same in all countries. In other countries, uh, certainly a lot of European countries, um, as I've written, maximising corporate wealth, uh, they're much more concerned, not just about shareholders, but Things like employees, they didn't have employees, representatives on the boards of companies and so on, and pay more attention to them. 
Uh, over the page, uh, again, maximising shareholders' wealth. Uh, you'll see over and over again later. Uh, I'm repeating myself, I know a lot, but the ultimate idea of looking at the effect of a decision on the share price, the higher share price, the better. And the types of decisions that will be made, which ultimately do influence shareholders' wealth. Uh, and this is, if you like, an introduction to what's coming. There'll be investment decisions. Uh, shall we invest in a, a new project? Shall we acquire another company? Uh, we'll be looking at net present values, something you should be aware of anyway from uh, the earlier exam. Uh, decisions on sources of finance. Company needs to raise more finance. Shall they raise more money from shareholders? Shall they raise it from lenders? Uh, another decision needs making. Uh, decisions regarding the level of dividend. You know full well that however much uh, profit a company is making, most companies don't distribute all their earnings as dividends. They retain some earnings so they can use it to expand the company. But decisions do need to be made as to what level of dividends should we actually pay. And finally, uh, risk. Decisions regarding the hedging of currency interest rate risk. Again, something uh, that was introduced in the previous financial management exam, but uh, we'll look in a lot more detail uh, as we go through the lecture notes, a lot more detail um, that weighs off hedging this risk of dealing with it. Uh, finally, again, very much introductory, but it's relevant, I'll mention it again in a later chapter. Um, there's um, a section there headed up share ownership in the UK. And remember why this is relevant, because we want to maximise the value uh, of the shareholder's wealth. It used to be the case many, many years ago, that the majority of shares in companies were held by individuals. Uh, these days, individuals own, own a much lower proportion of the shares directly. Most shares in large quoted companies, sorry, that's what I'm talking about, but large quoted companies, most of their shares tend to be owned by institutions. Um, pension funds, they invest in large companies, uh, unit, unit trusts or mutual funds, which you should have heard of, but that's where you as an individual invest in this unit trust. But the unit trust takes everybody's money and invests it in large quoted companies. And as I say, most uh, shares in quoted companies now are held by these big institutions. And so, it's what they want that is most important. They're the people who influence uh, what the company does. They're the people who dominate uh, shareholders' meetings. We've got to make sure, the directors have to make sure, that they keep these big institutions happy. Uh, because it's them who are effectively controlling the company. So there we are, I said I'd keep it short, I've probably spoken too long anyway. Uh, but I think you'll probably see what I mean when I say these first few chapters are really very much just background, uh, a combination of background and um, revision of previous knowledge. Uh, it's later we'll come to the calculations, uh, we certainly get a lot more exciting.